All right, guys, so here's a, it's one question, and I'll tell you where I uh, actually got this here in, in just a second. Uh, but I want you to do this. If you get this one wrong, make sure you hit subscribe to the channel. And really what I mean by that is the reason I do this channel um, is to hit questions like this, stuff that, you know, anybody can teach the simple stuff, but it's this, this kind of obscure, and, and, and sometimes the difference between passing and failing is one question. And we all know those people who, who missed it by a point or two, and my goal is not to allow that happen to you. Okay? So do me a favor, hit subscribe. It does help. I, you know, I kind of look at that and see if anybody really, you know, if, if people are finding this information helpful. So uh, do me a favor and do that, and uh, let's get started with this one. Now, this one says, a 14-month-old boy is brought to a small rural hospital by their parents due to arithmetic edematous perianal mass. Parents are told that the student that, that the treatment is beyond the capabilities of their hospital. Parents are referred to a suburban hospital with pediatric services 50 miles away. The receiving hospital is contacted and the pediatric surgeon accepts the patient. Upon arrival at the suburban hospital emergency department, it is revealed that by the triage nurse that the child has no insurance coverage. The family is recommended to go to the university hospital five minutes away. The parents comply and their son has an incision and drainage at the university hospital. Which of the following most accurately describes the patient's pattern of care? Is it A, appropriate given the circumstances? Is it B, the rural hospital should have referred directly to the university hospital? Or is it C, sub, uh, suburban hospital, emer hospital, uh, excuse me, suburban hospital emergency medical treatment and active labor act violation? So guys, <clears throat> here's where I got this. First of all, you know, determine what your answer uh, might be. You know, was it appropriate or should they have referred directly to the university because the kid didn't have insurance or maybe they didn't ask or is it a violation of this thing called MTALA? And guys, the correct answer is C. It's a violation of MTALA. Now, you may have not even heard of this and, I, and honestly speaking, I didn't even hear about it until I started working, you know, kind of where I'm at, <clears throat> but, it, but it is a big deal. So really where I got this, guys, if you look at the USMLE content outline, right? This is where we should be getting a lot of our stuff. If you look at the very last page, and this is for step one, step two, and step three, under healthcare economics, and again, I was looking for a topic that would be good for you guys, healthcare economics, uh, healthcare financing, da, 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 da. If you look in here, you'll see the word MTALA, okay? And really what that is, is, <clears throat> is that basically... Uh, it stands for it stands for Emergency Medical Treatment and Labor Act. Hosp you know requires hospitals with emergency departments to provide medical screening and care. Basically, okay, it's like this: you can't kick the can down the road because you don't want to treat somebody whether they have insurance, no insurance, or anything like that. So if you're a hospital and you basically have an emergency department or something to that effect, you know there's de there's a definition of it in here. It means that you pretty much you 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 just you just can't turn people away. Okay, if you do, you get in big trouble. You can get fines. Um, and physicians, because even when we're on call at my current hospital, if we don't accept a patient from a different hospital for mental health reasons, you know, we, we could be in violation of MTALA. So it is a big deal, okay? But basically it just says that if you're at an emergency room, if you have a hospital emergency room and you have the capabilities to treat, you just can't kick the can because they don't have insurance or you don't like the patient or, and, or not, and you got to document. And again, where did I get this stuff? Just so you guys know, I'm not dreaming this stuff up uh, out of thin air is basically, gosh, what was that, that one paper? It's from the USMLE content outline. Of course, you can, guys get this online. And the very last page has some talent. So again, guys, sometimes the difference between passing is and failing is one question. Um, I don't want you to be that guy uh, that it happens to, so I want you to know things like this. If you found this video helpful, um, you know, forward it to somebody. Uh, you know, just let them know that this, this kind of question is out there. Uh, let me know that you find this stuff helpful. Uh, hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Hope it was helpful, guys.